yes good morning students welcome to model school webinars for senior inter students in the previous zoology session prashanti ma'am uh, started about human anatomy and physiology about uh, neuronal coordination isn't it so in that chapter uh, ma'am discussed about the brain now let us learn about the spinal cord and also about the uh, central nervous system that is about the uh, both the systems that is peripheral as well as central nervous system okay uh, good morning madam prashanti madam welcome madam good morning madam thank you madam yes please take over the session okay madam good morning dear students today we shall continue with the second session that is uh, the spinal cord cranial nerves and spinal nerves under the chapter neural control and coordination let us recall the first session children nervous system comprises of peripheral nervous system central nervous system central nervous system it is again divided into brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system is further classified into autonomic somatic and visceral nervous system autonomic further again divided into sympathetic parasympathetic and enteric nervous system yes we have learned about the major parts of the brain children that is the forebrain midbrain and the hindbrain the nervous system that is uh, the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves these had been included under the peripheral nervous system and also it comprises of somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system yes children in our previous session we have learned the first part that is the brain in the central nervous system and now we shall continue with the second part that is the spinal cord followed by cranial nerves and spinal nerves let us discuss the amazing functions spinal cord performs in our body spinal cord is an often forgotten or understandable or underestimated part of human body in comparison to the other major organs like head kidney liver or brain the spinal cord and brain together constitute the central nervous system in that we have learned about the brain children let's see the spinal cord spinal cord is an incredible mesh of nerves just see children there are many nerves which have been interconnected it is a vital organ to the body then what happens if the spinal cord gets damaged yes a damaged spinal cord cripples all the basic functions even if the person is alive the brain and the spinal cord together constitute the central nervous system the spinal cord the fascinating piece of artistry is connected to the brain just see children this is the spinal cord this has been connected to the brain at the base of your neck and runs all over the way to the lower back this has been situated in the vertebral column and uh, this has been uh, running the continuation of the brain stem it is having a bundle of nerve cells and fibers that are been wrapped together okay they are been extending from the foramen magnum where is the foramen magnum children this is been present in the hind brain part so this is been extending from the foramen magnum that is at the base of the skull and this has been running to the lumbar vertebrae that is l1 or l2 and here it terminates as corners medullaris then what is the growth and development of spinal cord and vertebral column right from birth children there is no correct proportion between the spinal cord growth and the vertebral column growth that is uh, we can say that they are not of the same size so that is uh, where does uh, the spinal cord arise so that is when the child is in the mother's womb the spinal cord develops it develops from the lower end of the neural tube so at the third month 
or when the child is in the mother's womb the spinal cord fills the vertebral column that is we can say that both the spinal cord and vertebral column are of both the same size when you see at the third month but uh, it changes that is from the fifth month that is uh, the vertebral column it is a little bit bigger in size than that of the spinal cord and uh, at the birth when you see the lower level of the spinal cord is at the third lumbar vertebrae so the spinal cord at the infants it uh, finishes uh, growing that is at end of l3 that is the lumbar vertebrae and after birth vertebral column grows faster than that of the spinal cord so the spinal cord grows finishes it stops at the age of 4 whereas the vertebral column continues to grow till the age of 14 or to up to 18 children so in adults the spinal cord occupies only the upper two third of the vertebral column yes the female spine is definitely different from that of the male spine both are of not of the equal size children when you see the female spine it is 43 cm and that of the male spine it is about 45 cm yes when you take in inches it is nearly 16 to 18 inches children and when you see our body here at the neck region we call it as cervical region and the back region that is the thoracic and the lower back is the lumbar region so we find the enlargements that is at the cervical region and the lumbar region and it is having spinal nerves then what is the difference between spinal cord and vertebral column do they sound the same children no many think that both are the same no children so here spinal cord this is a thin tubular structure this is been present inside the vertebral column okay and vertebral column is surrounding the spine okay it is made up of 33 bones which are called as vertebrae for example when you take a pen and uh, the refill inside it you can think it as a spine or a spinal cord and the pen is vertebral column so the pen is little bit shorter in size when you uh, that is sorry the refill is little bit smaller in size whereas the pen is larger in size okay the spine is smaller children and the vertebral column is a little bit uh, taller so these are the vertebral discs children this have been present in between the vertebrae so this is the spine and this has been sur surrounded by the vertebral column and here when you see there is a collection of nerves even at the corner of the spinal cord so this is the collection of nerves children this is called as corda equina corda means tail so this resembles the horse tail so we can also call it as horse tail children so this is a collection of nerves at the terminal end and uh, when you see the inferior end there are uh, different uh, parts children like cornus medullaris which is a cone shaped part here it is been present and the corda equinus that is uh, the beyond uh, the lower end of the spinal cord it is been present and when you see the layers you have learned about uh, the brain protective tissue layers that is dura mater arachnoid mater pia mater just recall it children likewise here when you see even in the spinal cord there are three protective connective tissue layers called as meninges here we find children the outer dura mater which is a thick outermost layer and uh, the middle that is uh, the arachnoid layer and the innermost thin layer called as the pia mater then what do these meninges do these will be protecting the spinal cord and they will be supplying the nutrients so these are continuous with the cranial meninges yes as we have learned that uh, the nerves are been coming out from the spinal cord so these are called as spinal nerves so let's see the divisions of spinal cord children the spinal cord it is having the five types of division so just notice it children at the head part it is called as cervical division 
and uh, here at the upper back that is the thoracic part and the lower back it is the lumbar part and uh, followed by the sacral and the coccygeal regions and we find two types of enlargements one is uh, the cervical enlargement which has been continuing from c3 that is a cervical 3 to the t2 that is the thoracic vertebrae and we find the another enlargement at the lower back region that is a lumbar that is from l1 to the s3 so over here when you see here that is between l1 and l2 there is a tapered end that is called as corners medullaris yes the cervical level that is distributing the nerves to the upper extremity that is to the upper limbs and when you see at the lumbar region it is supplying nerves to the lower back and here when you notice the cross section of the spinal cord the spinal cord is flattened dorso ventrally and it is divided into two half children that is by divided by the anterior and the posterior median sulcus it is having white matter and gray matter yes you have learned about this even in your brain children where is the white matter present the white matter is present towards the inner side gray matter towards the outer side in the brain but it is reversed in the spinal cord the white matter is in the outer side children and here the gray matter is in the inner side white matter comprises of myelinated axons and when you find the gray matter here this is the inner side it is a h shaped children just see a cross bar or a butterfly shaped area this is the central area or the spinal neuroglia it is been called as the gray matter comprises of cell bodies neuroglia dendrites and unmyelinated axons yes when you see children it is uh, the spinal cord arises as rootless but combined to form roots here we find dorsal root and ventral root so the dorsal root just see children here the dorsal root it is having a ganglion this is the dorsal root ganglion children and uh, the lateral ventral root both these combine the dorsal root ventral root they will be combining and uh, they will be forming the spinal nerve phylum terminale so this phylum terminale this is the extension of pia mater what is pia mater children you have learned the three membranes that is uh, the arachnoid matter dura mater pia mater so pia mater that is the innermost layer so the extension of pia mater that extends from the terminal end of the spinal cord that is uh, to the tail bone here this is uh, the phylum terminale and here it measures about 20 cm in length and the outer phylum terminale externum that is 5 cm and the phylum terminale internum it is 15 cm yes it will be anchoring the spinal cord in place and uh, when you see uh, the horns of uh, the gray matter it is having six horns here when you see they are two posterior gray horns two lateral gray horns and two anterior gray horns so therefore we find six horns in the gray matter and when you see the white matter it is also having the anterior lateral and posterior white columns they are been present and it is also distributed by the various nerve fibers it is uh, having the central part that is uh, the central canal which is also called as neuroglia which is h shaped children which is present in the gray matter it is a center area and it is having the cerebrospinal fluid which has been run all along the vertebral column and uh, the spinal cord yes when you see it has been connected superiorly with the fourth ventricle how many ventricles are present children in the brain yes we have learned that is two lateral ventricles third ventricle fourth ventricle so this uh, spiral canal 
or the central canal it has been connected superiorly with the fourth ventricle and inferiorly in the corners medullaris that is the lower end of the spine yes what are the functions of spine it is receiving and uh, the transmitting the electrical signals throughout the body and back again to the brain it controls at the moment whether it might be voluntary or involuntary for example you want to jump that is without the spinal cord involvement you cannot jump children and uh, that is involuntary activities that is withdrawal of our hand if something pricks or if you catch a fire you withdraw it immediately so the involuntary movements and also the reflexes and uh, here this is acts as a middleman between the receptors and the effectors and did you ever listen to anesthesia children when anesthesia is given and what is anesthesia yes it is a temporary loss of sensation or a way of blocking the pain during a surgery or a medical purpose so there are three types of anesthesia that is local regional and general anesthesia local local anesthesia this has been given that is uh, to the parts that is localized to a particular area for example to a tooth a regional anesthesia that is been given that to a particular area like arm legs or uh, during a child birth this is been given to the spine region and general anesthesia this is given during the major surgeries like open heart surgery so here the person that is a patient is made completely unconscious so this is the anesthesia solution children which is been injected into the spinal fluid so that is been injected into the that is uh, the subarachnoid space what is subarachnoid space children it is a space between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter so it has been injected into the subarachnoid space let's move to the next uh, nervous system children that is the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system it is a division of nervous system containing all the nerves outside the central nervous system it includes cranial nerves spinal nerves somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system peripheral nervous system already we have learned children that is it includes cranial and spinal what is cranial so that is the connecting the brain the nerves connecting the brain to the different parts it is called as cranial nerves there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves next when you take spinal nerves it connects spinal cord to the different body parts there are 31 pairs cranial nerves these originate directly from the brain that is inside the cranium that's why it is been named as cranial nerves they enter and emerge out through the various foramina in the bones of cranium so there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves from that 10 pairs arise from the brain stem what is brain stem children it is a combination of mid brain that is pons and medulla oblongata so here it is a combination of three and two pairs arise from the mid brain and these cranial nerves are classified into three types they are sensory motor and mixed what are sensory nerves that is information of the pain and other sensation it is called as sensory nerve motor nerves that is it senses the movement and actions of the muscles mixed nerve that is it is an association of both sensory and motor nerve fibers that is it takes in the sensory information and gives out the muscle command so there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves children they are olfactory nerve optic nerve oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve trigeminal nerve abducens nerve facial nerve auditory nerve also called as vestibulo cochlear nerve glossopharyngeal nerve vagus nerve spinal accessory nerve and hypoglossal nerve so children you may think these terms these are very difficult so it is not so difficult children see there are three os o o o olfactory optic and oculomotor okay next to two t's trochlear nerve and trigeminal nerve and there are two a's children abducens nerve and auditory nerve so that is 
nearly half of the nerves you have got it so if you learn it uh, once uh, or twice or thrice it will be very easy yes see these are the distributions of uh, the various spinal nerves children yeah let's see one after the other the first one is olfactory nerve this is the first cranial nerves just see children always they are arranged in pairs so this is olfactory nerves so olfactory means what children it is pertaining to smell so this is the first cranial nerve it is a sensory nerve it arises from the olfactory receptors in the nose yes they are having the olfactory bulbs they arise from the cerebral hemisphere and it is made up of uh, the multiple layers of the cells and they carry the information of the smell which is being received that is uh, to the olfactory cortex which uh, recognizes the smell and uh, this is the sensation of the smell that is the brain receiving the information and uh, this is recognizing the smell and uh, we smell different kinds of things isn't it children and uh, suppose we are having some problem in the smell that is they are the doctors advise for a smell test that is small bottles containing various uh, that is familiar odors they are been asked to smell like coffee lemon chocolate garlic etc so this is uh, the test children that is they are been done and even now in the present pandemic situation of covid 19 that is if you have any symptom that is of uh, the absence of uh, smell or absence of test so like this uh, you can be testing even in the home to know whether the particular nerve is been functioning or not so if this nerve gets damaged so that is uh, the condition is called as anosmia that is absence of smell next we go to the second nerve children that is the optic nerve optic nerve acts like a cable connecting the eye with the brain so this optic nerve is a second cranial nerve it is sensory it arises from the retina of the eye each nerve com each eye comprises of 1.1 million nerve cells and here when you see children two optic nerves coming from the retina of the eye that is they cross each other at the point of diencephalon where is diencephalon children it is present in the forebrain so they cross each other and they form optic chiasma so this is optic chiasma and from there they will be reaching the occipital lobe of the brain next comes the oculomotor nerve this is the third cranial nerve children this is motor in function just see children this is the oculomotor nerve this is arising from the mid brain and this innervates that is uh, the various muscles of the eyeball so here what are the eye muscles it is innervating children just will be seeing it will be innervating that is uh, the inferior oblique superior oblique lateral rectus and also that is ciliary and iris muscles of the eyeball and this oculomotor nerves just say children these are the oculomotor nerves so if there is any damage to the third cranial nerve that is oculomotor as it has been accommodating the eye and it is helpful in raising the upper eyelid so if this does not function properly it leads to oculomotor palsy so this is a condition that when we apply more pressure to the eye that is exposing to the more light or we are doing night study more so it really strains our nerves of the eyes so in that condition that is our nerves pertaining to that of the oculomotor they do not get proper sufficient blood supply so it impairs the eye movements next comes the fourth nerve children over here that is the trochlear nerve this is the fourth uh, cranial nerve just notice this children in the picture trochlear nerve this is the motor nerve and this is the only cranial nerve arising directly dorsally from the brain so 
over here this is a trochlear nerve arising from dorsally from the brain it processes brain signals to move the eyes up and down okay and also outward and when you see any damage to the trochlear nerve that is it causes lesions in the eye that is i cannot look down and the person suffering from this damage of the trochlear nerve that is they cannot walk downstairs next uh, we go to the fifth nerve fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve this is a mixed nerve children and this is the largest of all the cranial nerves this is the most complex also children of all the cranial nerves and it is having three branches here the three branches are ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular so it is having nerves concerned to the eye upper jaw and lower jaw this trochlear nerve this is responsible for the sensation in the face and motor functions such as biting and chewing it is also responsible for sensation in the face wherever if you put your fingers on your face yes we face or we have experience some sensation that is due to the trochlear nerve the next uh, sixth cranial nerve that is the abducens nerve which is a motor nerve arising from the pons of the brain stem it will be innervating the lateral rectus muscles this controls uh, the muscles of the facial expression might be anger pain fear smile so all the facial expressions these are been controlling and also it innervates the muscles of the face and the scalp so when you see this is the facial nerve children here this is the seventh cranial nerve and here when you see it will be arising from the pons and it is responsible for taste and also different expressions and any damage in the facial nerve that is uh, the you will have an inability to blink our eyes okay so damage to the facial nerve it leads to the facial palsy next comes the vestibulo cochlear nerve which is also called as the auditory nerve this is the eighth cranial nerve children and it is having two branches cochlear branch and vestibular branch and the cochlear that is arising from the organ of cauti and vestibular this arises from semicircular canals saculars and utriculars these are the parts of the internal ear this helps in positioning of our head and also hearing so here this is responsible for the body balance and the eye movement children so this is the organ of cauti and here the sound is being sent that is from the organ of cauti towards uh, the inner side of the brain in this way the sound is been moving from the outer ear it is moving to the middle ear that is here we find three small bones malleus incus and staples from there it is moving to the inner ear cochlea and from there it is been moving uh, to towards the brain so in this way it transmits sound and equilibrium that is the balance information from the inner ear to the brain next comes the glossopharyngeal nerve it is uh, the ninth cranial nerve which is a mixed in nerve this uh, arises from medulla oblongata it carries efferent sensory and efferent motor information sensory here it is uh, carrying the general sensation from posterior one third of the tongue and when you take motor it assists in swallowing so any damage to the glossopharyngeal nerve it will be leading to neuralgia that is a severe pain which has been found on the tonsils and also ear region and also loss of taste next comes the very important nerve children that is the 10th cranial nerve vagus nerve it is a mixed nerve and this is the longest and widely distributed cranial nerve it is also called as wandering nerve which arises from the medulla and this is the only cranial nerve 
that has been coming beyond the head and also neck region. When you see the various rhythm centers, like might be respiration, circulation, that is our heartbeat, our respiration and digestive juices secretion. All these are being controlled in the medulla region that is through the vagus nerve. Next comes the 11th nerve, cranial nerve, that is spinal accessory nerve, which is the motor nerve. This arises from the medulla oblongata. This is helpful in the turning movements of the head and also shoulder movements and voice production. Any damage to the spinal accessory nerve, it leads to the severe shoulder pain and also weakness of the muscle. So just see children here, the trapezius muscle will get damaged and you get severe shoulder pain if uh, the spinal accessory nerve is getting damaged. Next, we go to the 12th cranial nerve, that is hypoglossal nerve, that is a motor nerve. It arises from the brain medulla part and it has been leading to the tongue. It innovates the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue. This is helpful in tongue movements, speech and also swallowing. So here, these are a few mnemonics, children, just to remember your nerve. The nerves, you may think these are very difficult, but these are very easy. Olfactory. Olfactory, it is pertaining to the smell. So see children, this is one first cranial nerve, olfactory. And here, second one, optic. Third one, oculomotor. Fourth one, that is trochlear. And sixth one, abducens. These are all concerned with the eye movements, isn't it children? And fifth one is a trigeminal. So this is concerned with the facial movements. And when you take the seventh one, this is also facial, that is also responsible for facial movement. Eighth one, vestibulo cochlear, that is for concern to the hearing and balance. And next comes the ninth one, glossopharyngeal. This has been pertaining to the tongue. And uh, next comes the 10th one, vagus nerve. It will be connecting to the various internal nerves. And here comes the 11th one. This is a spinal accessory nerve. This has been connecting to that of the uh, head movements. And the 12th one, this is hypoglossal. This is also pertaining to the tongue. So this is a very easy way of remembering all the nerves. Let's summarize these cranial nerves, children. Here, this is olfactory, optic. These both are sensory. And when you take oculomotor, trochlear, these are motor nerves. And uh, trigeminal, that is the mixed nerve. Abducens, that is the motor nerve. And the facial nerve, it is a mixed nerve. Vestibular cochlear, this is sensory. Glossopharyngeal, mixed. Vagus nerve, a very important one, mixed nerve. Spinal accessory, a motor nerve, and hypoglossal, also a motor nerve. So this is also the pictorial representation, children. Here, olfactory, pertaining to the smell, and oculomotor, that is the eye movements, trigeminal. Already we have learned, children, three branches arise from the trigeminal part, that is ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. And here, the facial nerves arising from the brain, Vestibulococular. So these are coming from the ears, accessory nerves. Okay. So these are arising from the facial part, children. Vagus nerve, the very long. This has been distributed to the various organs like heart, lungs, digestion, etc. And glossopharyngeal, that is the tongue. So let's see the functions. Olfactory, smell, optic, sight. Oculomotor eye movement, trochlear eye movement, trigeminal, face sensation and chewing, abdugens, once again it is eye movement, facial nerve, facial movement and closing of the eye, a vestibular cochlear, hearing and balance, glossopharyngeal, taste and swallow, vagus nerve, it is gag reflex and parasympathetic, accessory, that is moving the head and shrugging of the shoulders, and hypoglossal, that is moving the tongue, swallowing and for the speech. So any injury, that is uh, the nerve impulse gets disturbed.
spinal nerves let's enter into the spinal nerves children spinal nerves they arise from the spinal cord these are the major nerves and also the mixed nerves it is a pathway of communication between the spinal cord and also the various body parts it these are not sensory or motor these are a combination of both so they are called as mixed nerves they send motor sensory and autonomic signals between the central nervous system and the body and when you see they are based on the location classified into five groups they are cervical eight pairs thoracic 12 pairs lumbar five pairs sacral five pairs and coccygeal one pair so here children the uppermost that is from c1 to c here these are the cervical regions and here that is from t1 to t12 these are the thoracic regions and the lower back this is the lumbar region and still to the extreme end this is the sacral and the last one is the coccygeal and when you see cauda equina so already we have learned children about this in the spinal cord the cross section cauda equina so this is the sheath of nerves arising from the tip of the spinal cord so this is a combination of lumbar 1 to 5 and the sacral first vertebrae so this by this combination nerve roots it forms a sheath of nerves called as cauda equina okay so this cauda equina this is resembling the horse tail children and any compression to that nerve the people will be suffering from severe low back pain this is also called as spinal plexus and here the plexus these are been classified into cervical plexus brachial plexus lumbar sacral coccygeal so the network of nerve fibers it is been called as plexus just see this picture children here cervical plexus this is the brachial plexus and this is the lumbar plexus sacral plexus and uh, the extreme last one this is the coccygeal plexus the uppermost part when you see this is the cranial and uh, the lower cranial nerves these are the brachial plexus and uh, the lower back this is the lumbar plexus and uh, the still extreme end is the sacral and the coccygeal plexus let's see one after the other so cervical they are the first four and thoracic next four cranial nerves and uh, lumbar that is there arising from the lumbar vertebra and the sacral and coccyx arising from the sacral and coccyx spinal nerves okay nerves arising from the spine these are called as spinal nerves the first one is cervical plexus so these are the first four cranial nerves children these are arising that is uh, from the head region c1 to c4 so just see children these are the cervical plexus okay they send nerves to the neck shoulders arms and the chest region and uh, here these are the cervical plexus first four cranial nerves and any damage to it so for example when you take a phrenic nerve a very important cervical plexus which is been present so this is the phrenic plexus present between the c3 to c5 which innervates the diaphragm any injury to this it will be causing that is a respiratory arrest difficulty in breathing and shortness of breath and next we go to the next that is the brachial plexus so that is uh, the 5 to 8 see children here this is a continuation c5 to c8 cranial nerves and also the first thoracic nerve t1 so here 5 to 8 cranial nerves and the first thoracic nerve so these combinations is called as brachial plexus so these are the lower four cranial nerves and these are been sending nerves to the trunk chest abdominal region that is the shoulders arms and the head 
region and any injury to this uh, here it will be leading to the brachial plexus uh, palsy and uh, here when you see this is been the brachial plexus uh, injury occurs during the automobile or any motorcycle accidents so can this be rectified so here when you see this arm paralysis may occur or by surgery this can again be restored next comes the lumbar plexus then what is lumbar plexus so this is children lumbar from first to four lumbar so this combinations is called as lumbar plexus and this is a web of nerves in the lumbar region it forms that is a part of the this lumbo sacral plexus and this is been sensory and motor it is been sending nerves to the leg particularly in the thigh region and uh, the most important ones are femoral nerve and obturator nerves it innervates the skin and muscles of the thigh region and next we go to the next that is the sacral plexus that is four five lumbar nerves fourth and fifth one and uh, sacral 1 2 3 so the combination of lumbar l4 5 and s1 s2 s3 it is called as sacral plexus it provides motor and sensory that is uh, the nerves to the posterior thigh region lower leg and the entire foot the most important nerve under it is sciatic nerve this is the thickest and the longest nerve of the body the next uh, last one is coccygeal plexus it is a combination of fourth and fifth sacral nerves and the coccygeal nerve okay so it innervates the skin and the coccygeal region around the tailbone then what does it do it supports the weight when we are sitting and uh, there is always a damage to the spinal cord children so the major problems we face are neck pain so that is uh, when we go on bend our head that is uh, doing continuous uh, studies or any work or uh, doing uh, computer work etc we suffer from back pain so it leads to the degeneration of uh, the nerves and also the calcium levels get decreased that is arthritis and also the tightening of the muscles that is muscle spasm occurs and we also see that is a very rare disease condition children that is spina bifida this is a birth defect that is uh, the baby spinal cord just see the picture children the baby spinal cord that is fails to develop properly so it is a very rare case only one baby out of 1000 they will be suffering or they get this uh, the congenital defect condition and it is an incomplete closure of the spine and the major problem women face are facing nowadays is sciatica that is uh, this is the sciatic nerve damage and here this pain radiates all along the sciatic nerve that is been running down that is one leg or both the legs from the lower back it occurs when the spine presses on the nerve okay then how to get relief from this sciatica so by having a short walk every day compulsorily and uh, stretching exercises that is uh, uh, stretching your lower back will cause a little bit uh, relax against or preventing the sciatica and how can we trace out the problems of spinal cord that is uh, by going to the doctor having uh, taking an x ray a mri scan and doing daily yoga asanas exercises and uh, have keeping that is uh, the cervical collar to our, our neck region and uh, having re going to rehabilitation centers undergoing physiotherapy keeps our spine always healthy healthy okay children till now we have learned about spinal cord in under that we have learned about the various meninges children that is dura mater arachnoid mater pia mater we have learned also about the two enlargements 
that is the cervical and lumbar we also have studied about the groups and also that is corners medullaris that is the tapering end the central canal that is uh, the, uh, in the gray matter and anterior and posterior horns we have learned in the spinal cord children and we have learned about the peripheral nervous system cranial nerves and under that we have learned that is the oculomotor third cranial nerve trigeminal fifth cranial nerve and abducens sixth nerve that is useful for eye movements and the trigeminal nerve that is a fifth one sixth one that is over here when you see this is having three branches children this trigeminal nerve that is uh, uh, leading to the eyes maxillary and abdom and uh, the uh, sorry upper jaw and the lower jaw it has been distributing its uh, branches this is a mixed nerve we also have studied about vestibulo cochlear nerve which is the eighth cranial nerve this has been responsible for hearing and balance and uh, vagus nerve this is a 10th cranial nerve which is a mixed nerve and we are also learned about spinal nerves under that we have learned about the cervical plexus thoracic plexus lumbar plexus and and the sacral plexus and coccygeal plexus here is a small assignment children backbone is not a single bone it is made of dash bones how many bones it is made up of children backbone is not a single bone yes it is made up of 33 bones the